Dave, this is your workshop, right? Yes. It uh, pretty much looks like a workshop too. Got a lot of equipment in here. This is where we make things happen. So what are we going to look at today? Uh, today we have an indoor part of a wine cellar system. And uh, here's the evaporator coil. We have some components here that go with it. And uh, we put these all together to make it work. And uh, this is the evaporator coil here. So you make up your own systems, right? We do. We build all of our own systems from scratch uh, using the very finest uh, components available. We don't search China for uh, the weakest parts or the cheapest parts. We go and get the very best that we can buy. And, uh, build so why is, that, why is that important to you? That because we don't like callbacks. When we put a system together, we want it to work first time and work down the road. We don't want to kind of to be calling, having callbacks. People call us back saying it's not working or it's broken. We want it to work for a very long time with no problems whatsoever. And, so, and you, do, you do maintenance on your uh, Sure, yeah, we system. provide maintenance and we have a service trucks available that are out every day and doing service work, so uh, any problems that may occur, we're here for you. So let's see what's in the box. Okay, this is the evaporator coil. This has one fan inside. So where does that go in a typical wine cellar? We would put this, for instance, up in the corner of the wall at the ceiling. I can't reach quite high enough, but it could go up tight against the ceiling. Uh -huh. It could be mounted on the wall. Um, so it's very versatile in its placement and how you can configure it in the cellar so, and hide it. So it actually goes in, that's the part that goes in the cellar? Correct. And here we have a... So would it, no, would it normally be on show? <clears throat> On show where you could see it? Yeah. No. This would be concealed in the racking or would have a wooden cover designed to go over it. Right. So people aren't going to see some because it, right. it does look at, I mean, it's, um, it's as, as a piece of machinery, it's pr probably pretty cool, but it, it's probably not. <laughs> this, this is the story with that. If you buy a wine cellar system that is pretty, you're probably buying the very weakest form of refrigeration available. Right. If it looks pretty, you're buying, I'm not going to say it, but. But this is all commercial equipment. It's right. designed for people who are out in the real world doing refrigeration every day. This is the stuff that makes it happen in so the you'd real put, world. So you'd put this type of thing in, into some kind of big commercial job? Oh, we'll put them in all kinds of different refrigeration applications. We build walk-in freezers big enough to drive forklifts in and out of. So refrigeration is our forte. Right. So we're very good at what we do with refrigeration. We've gotten really good over the years at wine cellar refrigeration. We became, uh, really good at. We've we gone through a lot of process and elimination, uh, finding coils that are quiet and uh, can be placed easily and hidden, and this one seems to work the best for us so far. Now, we have many other coils that we do use. This is just one of them. Um, sometimes there'll be applications where we need to use a skinny coil that'll have to go tight up against the ceiling. So, so what would this one be appropriate for then? 90% of all sellers you could use this coil. Uh, anything that's um, 10 by 10 or smaller. Right. Roughly. Okay. If you got bigger, then we're going to have to go with a, a bigger system and, and probably a forced air type of a static. Uh, so a typical, of... relatively small room wine cellar then? Correct. This is from quarter through half horsepower, from 10 by 10 to smaller. And this is the largest of the three coils like this. They, they make one, this is the 150, they make the 120, and then the 09, which is even smaller yet for a real small cellar. So this is the big one here. You notice these pipes we got coming out the side here. We put expansion valves on here. This is a spoiling expansion valve, which is the best I can buy. And uh, this gets welded on here. Now, this is an expansion valve. What an expansion valve does is it takes high pressure liquid freon coming from the condensing unit, which is outside, and it goes to a low pressure vapor. Uh, by doing this, and it's, it's a little bit welded onto this coil, it transfers the freon from a high pressure liquid to a vapor, which is where it gets cold. Then it goes so it's, the so it's the process, sorry I'm a bit slow, so um, it's the process of going from liquid to vapor, so less dense that Pulls, makes it go cold. transfer takes place. And that's what makes everything go cold. That's what makes it be able to absorb the heat that's in the room that we're trying to remove and take outside to the condensing unit. When the Freon goes through this coil, it's cold. When it's, when it's coming out of this thing, it's frosting the pipes. And there's a fan inside blowing across that. 
And it, we can't say, I don't want to say that it's, it's blowing cold air into the room. I want to say it's removing the heat from the room by absorbing the heat that's in there into the Freon that is going to be carried via this pipe back to the outdoor unit where it's going to be removed.